a child is born when he is not born when he is in the womb of his mother he is in an altogether different environment when he is born he comes in contact with the atmosphere that we live in this atmosphere have multiple influences right depending on the influence of planet being greater or not that great is dependent on the strength of planet this is a very basic major point that you need to understand shedable is an aggregate strength though i am not in favor of using shedable a lot so i will be teaching you how the different factors of shedable which can be roughly translated into english as six fold strength of planet can be used should be used and the way i use it but somehow you should understand this particular point that if someone is born in afternoon the influence of sun is high because it is afternoon and at the time of afternoon sun will be in the south direction that will resonate with the 10th house telling us that the sun is getting directional strength becoming digable right so the level of influence one is getting just after his birth based on the place where he is born based on the time where he is born is seen through shadowable so what you are supposed to do you are supposed to take a horoscope go to this strength section and in this strength section you will see percentage of strength right here or you can go to this section here you will also see the percentage of strength tabular form and graph graphical tabular now the basic point is any planet who is having less than 100% of strength that is mercury and jupiter in this case that planet is weak planets having more than 100% of strength are powerful and they are powerful accordingly so certainly jupiter and mercury are weak they both are having 94% of points not 100% powerful then them is venus with 119% more powerful than venus is mars 128% more powerful than mars is moon with 148% more powerful than moon is saturn on 170% and most powerful is sun with 176% of strength right this keeps on changing time to time now this is different strength right the horoscope that you see just now was for the evening now it is the horoscope for the current moment and this schedule have changed so with the change of the ascendant the digbal of the planet will vary the digbal of the planet will vary will change leading to the change in the schedule percentage of strength should i tell you a point should i tell you a very beautiful point all this you know astrology that is being practiced by us let, let me tell you one thing there is a set of astrologers in india who are now very old they possess a huge experience but somehow they are not that technically sound right so they haven't learned like i will i will try to put astrologers into five six category right a few are you know indecent people like me who tend to question everything make new things etc etc and other is i don't consider them worthy of mentioning but a brand a set is those astrologers who are now very old possess years of experience 40 50 years of experience but somehow they are not very sound right they haven't learned many books on astrology they have just relied on the teachings of their teacher or relied on the teachings of one two books that they have learned they are not innovative they don't do any research at all but their understanding is very great and these astrologers are one of the top astrologers in almost any area right and this top astrologer is a quite a dubious word however what you will find after and you know these astrologers let me talk of those astrologers who survived between 16th century to 18th century they have also written books that are now available the books were written in sanskrit so the classics now 
द पॉइंट एंड इवन वारा मिहिर एंड कल्याण वर्मा ऑल ऑफ देम मेंशन इट बट इन द टेक्स्ट ऑफ लेटर टाइम बिटवीन सिक्सटीन टू एटीन सेंचुरी दिस बिकम्स वेरी प्रोमिनेंट ignore all the planet of the horoscope and just pick up the planet who is most powerful okay most powerful according to this percentage of shedbal strength which for this chart is sun now everything about the person is predicted using this planet only his nature temperament character professional life success etc anything anything that you can imagine is predicted based on this planet only and should it as i told you these are the old astrologers having 40 40 50 50 years of experience and do you understand something if someone is practicing astrology since 40 years it means they are doing that good astrology to sustain themselves for these many years doing this right so certainly they are good they are good in doing so this is the best model and you know this can be expanded to try to understand a point this person have sun as the most powerful planet right consider match making matching this chart with someone else now as we have learned the nature character temperament and everything of this native is concerned with sun that means when he is going to find a job the area where he will focus the most is the authority and power that he is gaining from it right in his family life also he will try to be the most authoritative and you know the ruling one who try to give orders and you know don't try to and you know avoid being dominated by others and all this thing now coming to matchmaking someone having saturn as the most powerful planet if they get married to this person who is having sun as the most powerful planet will they be able to live happily together certainly not right so this is a point that you should keep in mind you cannot see the horoscope yeah right so this sun and this particular thing right all the predictions about the native nature temperament character etc is predicted based on this planet this you should understand and you know what this gives you the quality this means guna guna is roughly translated as nature should be more translated as a quality and guna is a quality now to understand it understand it this way if someone gets money what they will do and the answer to this question answers will this money sustain or perish someone who is having the influence of venus mercury or moon over the ascendant or what i told you the 10th house right because the 10th house indicates the karma and also this most powerful planet in the shadbal is what you should see if the influence is of moon venus mercury these planets who are most most more enjoyment oriented happiness oriented mercury is affair oriented etc after getting that money and that power the one who have mercury as the most powerful planet will he be able to control himself from the temptation of not losing that money on women luxury cars and all these things he will not be able to he will start destroying his money by spending in these areas which in turn will create a problem for him right so either the money is not sustaining or even if it is sustaining it is not able to multiply because whenever the person have money in excess whenever the person have money in extra he is using it for enjoyment and purchasing things right giving mental satisfaction etc so if this person somehow saves 20 dollars a month he will make an amazon cart of 19 dollars and will wish to spend of the things that he don't want all right this have to be understood this dominating planet is very very powerful See, I should give you an example. Now, see this chart. This is a very dubious chart. You know, this is very dubious. 
why I will tell you, you see many planets are having equal strength, you know, Sun, Moon, Mars, Saturn, many planets are having equal strength. But should I tell you what? There are two types of horoscope that you will see. One where the planets are exceptionally powerful. It is not in this horoscope. Exceptionally powerful planet. I know a native with sun in the 10,000th Aries. And his sun is having 274 percentage of power. 274. Like it is like three times. Is this better? He is having sun having 274 percentage of strength. But Mercury and Jupiter are having less than 100%. Is it better? Or having all the planets have strength between 110 to 130%. No planet getting strength lesser than 100%. That is better. Certainly a balanced part is better. Right? Otherwise you go up and you also come down. Right? Both the things happen. In this chart, the thing is Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, they are not able to get at least the minimum strength, 100% that is needed. Such lives are, you know, at, at, at epitome at one point of time. Right? At one point of time, they may have everything in life. But they will lose it all as well because planets are weak, right? And weak planets will give you weakness, which is financial weakness, character weakness, moral weakness, whatever you say. More so financial weakness and weakening of power, weakening of influence, weakening of control over things, money, multiple, multiple areas of life it affects. Now in this particular horoscope, just give me a second. Yeah. So this is important. See, Saturn is most powerful. You see in the horoscope, Saturn is most powerful. This is a dubious chart. This is a pretty dubious chart. Why dubious? When two planets, like the most powerful planet, whatever the strength of it, if there is one, two, three, four, or other planets, having a strength equal to him, it gives a mixed nature, mixed tendency. Right? Read this particular point. Hmm. The effect of, yeah, we create a position. The native will have temperament according to the greater strength of the planet at the time of birth. If all of them or many of these planets have equal strength, then the temperament will be of a mixed character. And what I take as an equal strength? 5% plus 5% minus. 5% more, 5% less. 5 strength more, 5 strength less. So Saturn is 144, Sun is 140, uh, Moon is 143. So this Saturn, Sun and Moon, all three of them are almost equally powerful. So the person is not dominated by one uh, trait but have a mixture of it. This is pathetic. In life, you should have single focus. Are you getting my point? You want to have success. And see, everyone have their own ways of success. But let me tell you one thing. One is from a very humble background where his father and mother have not been able to give him anything. He wants to achieve success and wants to become a multimillionaire in his life, suppose. So certainly we have to work for 12 to 14 hours a day rigorously. Right? That will happen when the Saturn is powerful, and you know, Mars is powerful. These planets which are more career-oriented, more success-oriented, right? 
But at the same point of time, this person have mercury of equal strength. So this person also wants a lot of enjoyment. Right. So what will happen? He will work 12 hours, two days a week and will do nothing four days a week. Just enjoyment focused, you know. So nothing, just lying down on the couch, watching TV. So what do you think is will be the end result? The end result is wastage of efforts. Right. So focus in one direction is much needed. That is point one. And another thing is any planet which goes below 100% of strength is very pathetic. That planet is weak. And the house lauded by that planet also becomes weak. And when a house is weak and when a planet is weak, the planet is not able to give their result. Right? Now, if the sixth lord is weak, he will not be able to give you a disease. That is good. That is good. That is not bad. If the eighth lord is weak, it gives you good longevity. So that depends on which planet is getting weak. But how? This conflict of interest between two planets should not happen. Okay? As per the schedule, the person have the nature, trait, character, etc. based on that most powerful planet. And should I tell you one thing? I should tell you one thing. This is what I have recently noticed, you know. And my basic formula behind talking about these things is that you don't fall into the trap. Because traps are beautiful. There is a thing of, you know, like planet in fiery sign behave like this way. This is a type of prediction. You can see, you know, planet in fiery sign does this, planet in watery sign does this. I will not say that this is not useful. Certainly not. When we learn about Rashi, we also learn about them. But the nature, temperament, etc. of the planet is more decided based on this rather than that. So the nature, tattva, guna, qualities, etc. of the sign only works in that area which is signified by the planet based on the natural signification and the house lordship of the planet. The nature, temperament and characteristic of the native is dependent on this. Right? Understand this point very, very good. Okay. Now there is one more point. Your, the native's nature, character, etc. is decided by the suitable percentage of strength, right? What about the spouse? If you want to make a prediction about spouse, how do you know the nature, temperament, and characteristic of the spouse? You cannot have a separate schedule list with respect to the seventh house, right? In that scenario, the nature, trait, etc. of the sign, where the seventh lord is situated, planets in the seventh house and planets connecting with the seventh house comes into play, right? So certainly Leo being a fire sign is not a wrong concept. But when to use it, where to use it, and how to use it should be very, very clear. Okay? This point is extremely clear. This powerful planet is the key. The profession, etc., everything will be based on this planet only. Sorry. Sir, uh, I have seen one thing. Hmm. Uh, he, uh, some, uh, most of the time, which are taken up, Seven to eighty percent of the cases I've seen. I am not able to understand. Repeat, repeat it. Repeat it. Hello. Hmm. Sir, I'm saying, uh, like around seventy to eighty percent of the times I've seen, the sun is always the strongest in Generally, generally, the sun is the strongest in Shadwal because there is something known as natural strength. In that natural strength, sun is most powerful. But this is happening with you because you are looking at limited number of charts. If you only look at three, four charts, certainly you will notice this pattern. This is not the reality. Though in natural strength, sun gets the maximum power. This is one of the prime reasons. Right? But generally, it doesn't happen. Sun being the most powerful is uh, one by seven. 
the probability of it happening is 1 by 7. 7 other planets are also there, right? 1 by 6, rather. Right? 6 other planets are also there. So th this, will, this should not be the case. This should not be the case. Now, this particular thing. Now, previously, when we have learned about the tattvas of the planet, we have learned that Mars is a fire tattva, Mercury is an Earth element, Jupiter is either element, right? Venus is watery element and Saturn is an airy element. Whereas Sun was ruled by the Lord of Fire and Moon was ruled by the Lord of Water. So Parashara is explicitly mentioning that sun is also a fire element because he is ruled by the lord of fire. And moon is also the watery element because he is ruled by the lord of waters. Also, because Rahu behaves like Saturn, Rahu is also a airy element. And Ketu behaves like Mars, Ketu is also a fiery element. Right? That you should keep in mind. Okay. The effect of the temperament is felt in Dasha Antra, the of the planet. And the change in bodily luster is according to this particular element as well. This is used for three, four cases. In the earlier times, because the calcul astrological calculations were done manually, sometimes the calculation of the dasha and dasha was very probable that it can become incorrect. Right, so based on the nature, character, tendency one is having, the dasha antra dasha one is going into, he was supposed to have that kind of effect on their body also. That is point one. Point two, when you look at someone, you don't know about their horoscope. Someone asks you a particular question, you are supposed to look at their body and find which element is powerful that I will explain to you just after covering this slide. Whichever element is powerful as per their body, the problems should also be accordingly. And the remedy should also be accordingly. For an example, earth element indicates a smell from body. Fragrance, it is told as fragrance, you take it as smell. If someone is giving a foul smell, that means Mercury is activated because Earth element is in power. So certainly the problem one is suffering will also be related to Earth element. And the remedy for it will be a remedy related to Mercury because Mercury rules the Earth element. This is pretty clear. So this is the basic thing why it is done. And also, if one is having a weak Earth element, a weak Mercury, and you want to give strength to it, Mercury indicates fragrance. So uses of perfume, DO, etc. These things should be done. Regarding perfume, this is a very complex topic. The business of perfume is signified by sun. The application of perfume is signified by Mercury. The purchase of perfume is signified by Venus. An allergy from a particular type of smell is signified by Jupiter. So it is very complex. The effect of the five elements are realized completely when these planets are powerful and when these planets are weak, the result is also weaker in proposition. And this should not only be understood with respect to element, this should be understood with respect to everything. Should I give you an example? 